Hi there. We are going to look together at question 7 from this paper. And question 7 is on permutations and combinations. We call this counting principles. So here is the question. Please stop the movie and try it by yourself. Question I is a question where I need to count elements where the order matters. So if I switch some letters between them, I get another word. Therefore, uh, order matters. When the order matters, I'm going to use the model with the small bars. When the order doesn't matter, I'm going to use combinations. So instead of permutations, I'm going to use this model where I need to arrange the nine letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of the letter E is at the middle. So this is a fixed position for E. I have one single choice. And four letters are on the either side. So this means that on the remaining eight positions, I need to arrange the remaining eight letters. Okay, so I copy the word here. I use an E, so I'm not going to count for, for this E. I have eight letters to arrange. However, I have some duplicates. So I have E1, E2, E3, and then I have N1, N2. So these are duplicates. Therefore, I'm going to arrange these eight letters into eight factorial ways but I need to divide by 2 factorial times 3 factorial to count for the duplicates. When putting this in my calculator, I get 3360 ways. Second question is an interesting one. No E is next to another E. So let us start arranging first the letters that are not E. So I have four E's, therefore I have five other letters remaining. One, two, three, four, five. And the letters remaining are S, V, N, P, N. I can arrange this on five positions in five factorial ways. However, I have two repeating N's, so I need to divide by two factorial. And this is just for the five letters. Now let me arrange my four E's. Where do I put them such so that no E is next to each other? I have these positions for the four E's remaining. So I have six positions to choose from. So if I have six positions to choose from to arrange my E's, these are six combination four ways. Therefore, in total, I'm going to have 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 6 combination 4 ways of uh, arranging the letters according to the criterion II. I can use my calculator, of course, to find this number. Let me try with no calculator just for the sake of practicing factorials. Remember, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 factorial. This combination 4 is 6 factorial over 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Here I can cancel 2 times 1. I can cancel 4 factorial with 6 factorial being left with 5 times 6 here. I can cancel a 2 factorial with this 6 from here, so I'm left with 3. So my answer is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 5 times 3. And now a smart way of multiplying is that a 5 times a 2 from here gives me a 10. A 2 from here with a 5 from here gives me another 10. 3 times 3 gives me 9. So it's 900. Of course, you'd use your calculator to uh, estimate, to calculate this expression. But that's also a nice way to do it without calculator. Please remember as a strategy here, if you want to not to place objects next to each other, start by placing the ones that you don't have a condition for, 
and see where you have gaps to insert the ones that they don't need to be next to each other. Stop the movie again to read this question. Please notice how this question is different because now I need to choose letters, five letters out of the nine letters. So the choosing means that the order doesn't matter. Like for example, if I choose the letters S, E, V, D, N, is the same as I choose E, S, D, N, V, from, from example. These are the same. Whereas in the previous question, I was asked to arrange them, meaning that I get different words by arranging the letters. So now I need to choose nine, uh, five letters out of nine. Okay, so that's one way of visualizing the letters. I need to choose two E's, yeah? Choose two E's from here. So if I need two E's, will be E, E. I need to choose two N's, N, N. And I need five letters, so I can choose on the last position one out of three letters remaining. So in total, I have three choices. And these are three choices because it doesn't matter which, which of the four E's you choose here. They will be different. It doesn't matter in which order you choose. So you can choose an N first, an E, an N, and another E. But still, it's the same arrangement. It will be the same, the same set as the one before. So that's why you have three choices. Okay, let's look at the last question. Find the number of possible selections contain at least two E's. So I have two ways of doing it. I need to think about, it, about which way is faster. At least two E's means either two E's, exactly two E's, that's the, or exactly three E's, or exactly four E's. So that's one way to think about it. And I need to make it clear that it's exactly two E's, because if it's two or more here, I might count one of the sets two times. The second method will be total number count which are the total number of choosing five letters minus the number of uh, selections that contain one e or and mi or and minus take away the number of selections that contain zero e's so from the total number i take one away the ones with zero e's or with one e's let's look at both methods Okay, so method to the left. If I want exactly two E's, I need to select for the next three positions because I have five letters all together and I can't choose an E. The problem is that I ch can choose two N's, one N, or no N's, one N, and two N's. It makes a difference when I choose two N's. So assuming I choose two N's, so if I have two N's here, then I will have three choices. If I have just one N here and no other Ns, then from the three remaining letters, S, V, T, I need to select two. So it's three, choose two. If I have no N here, from the three remaining letters, I need to select three. So it's three, choose three, which is actually one. That's when I have exactly two E's. When I have exactly three E's, I need to select for two more positions. So I can have two N's here, which will give me one choice. I can have just one N here, which will leave me three choices here for the last letter. Or I can have no N here, Meaning that from the three letters, I choose two. If I have four E's, then on the last position, I need to choose one letter. And I can think of two as just as being one letter. Therefore, I will need to choose one out of the four letters N, S, V, T. So I'm going to have four choices. Now let's add up those numbers. So I have three from here, three combination two, 
which is another three here, three combination three, which is one way here, one, three, another three, and four. So all together I have 18 ways. I then gave a second thought to my second method. And I think it's much more difficult than the first one because of the ways to calculate the total number of selections of five letters with these letters repeating. So because these letters repeat, I, the selection of, for example, S, E, V, E, N will be the same as a selection if I replace E1, E2 by another, like for example, I leave E1 and I replace it by E3. It's going to be the same selection. So that's why it's very difficult, I think, to count a total number of uh, selections of five letters. So I'm going to drop the, the way I would calculate it would be actually starting to calculate them one by one for two is three is four is one is and zero is and that's how I would have the total number of selections. So that's why in this case this method would not work as easy as the other one. So I prefer the other one. 